guys, welcome back to another segment with me. I'm here today with these charming, handsome, intelligent men. Kwesi, would you like to introduce yourself first? Hi, uh, my name is Kwesi. I'm from Ghana and I live in VA for right now. Uh, my name is Kofi. Uh, I also am from Ghana. Uh, I live in Virginia. And my Instagram is at Kofi the Camp. Hey guys, so I'm just gonna go straight into the questions. When you ask a woman, or to be specific, a black woman, what her ideal type is, the first thing she usually says is handsome, and then the dark comes in, and then tall and other adjectives to follow. Do you feel like that boosts your confidence or gives you or affects your confidence in any way? Uh, go ahead. I was going to say it does, it does boost confidence. It does help with boosting confidence and all that. But then again, it puts you in a position where, you know, it's like she's looking for something in particular, you know what I'm saying? Like she has a notion, tall, dark, mm -hmm. handsome or whatever, and then she has a notion of something else that she's probably looking for to add up to it. You might not yeah. just be it, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So <clears throat> it's, it's a win and a loss situation like that. Sometimes. Okay, so it's it play so it boosts your confidence at the same time. It has these negative effects. It's, it's, is it like a lot of pressure? Is it too much pressure or? No, I wouldn't say pressure. Okay, but it just comes with its expectations also. Okay, how about you? I don't think there's no pressure. I mean, I feel like I don't know. I just feel like we always, you know, been ready for something like this, like. I feel like we always been ready to like be in the spotlight, so I feel like we're ready. Like this is our time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I feel like we're appreciating it. You know what I'm saying? We're indulging it, and we're just going with the flow. You know what I'm saying? If you got that charisma, you got that charisma. Yeah, right. and dark skin men have a lot of representation. I mean, in sports, the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they're everywhere. So I can see how, you know, why that makes y'all like. Confident, but at the same time, it's just like, okay, I might not be like Denzel Washington yeah, now. Facts, facts. <laughs> yeah. Facts, facts. How would you describe your experience as a dark skinned man in society, like in America? Uh, it's been dope, uh, honestly. Like, I guess a lot of people kind of, I'm not going to say cater, but a lot of people like come towards your way and like in good faith because, I don't know, maybe because they might think I'm funny. You might think like I'm good at basketball, good at football. Mm -hmm. They might want to pick me on their team. It's like so, you get good like energy around you for the most part. But then there are there like bad negatives and like it is kind of hard sometimes to make it here as a black man because you know it is a little bit harder to you know get a job or you know what I'm saying um, you know just get a job and work and just maintain. So I think I think it has its ups and downs, but for the most part, uh, it's pretty clutch. I love being black. I wouldn't trade it for nothing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's pretty much that's pretty much my outlook on that too, because I feel like you know, as far as representation for Black people has been in entertainment and sports, like you were saying, you know, being a Black person also puts you, in, it also gives you some sort of edge, like oh yeah, like we can be good in this, or like yeah. I also can't be good in that, you know, yeah. what I'm saying because of the fact that you're seeing like all right, Black people doing this, but then again, also like you're saying in today's society or like America as it is, you know. I mean, obviously, so we have the racial biases and whatnot, but then still, I mean, we try, we try, we're trying to make it what we're trying to make the best out of it as we can, for real. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm, I, it's refreshing to hear that you guys try to focus on the positive of being a black man in America, because a lot of times, especially last year with the whole shootings and everything, yeah, you know, I that's see. the first thing somebody thinks about when you say a black man. So it's, it's really refreshing to know that, you know, there are some positives about being a black man in America or living or at least appreciating yourself, appreciating your race and your skin tone. Uh, do any of you guys have dark skin mothers, sisters, oh, yeah. family members? Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, cool. Yeah, mom, dad, yeah. everyone in my family. Obviously. Yeah, no way. Yeah, nah. Um, yeah, all my siblings are dark skin. We're all beautiful black children, so... Yeah. See, that, that was my next question. Does this stigma about, like, being dark? I mean, now it's definitely better. It, like, when Back you say... it was worse. You guys yeah. ever felt like they were less attractive because they were dark? Like, your sisters? No, and, no, 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 no. I always just tell my sisters they're beautiful at a very young age. Like, yeah. because I knew, I knew it was hard. Like, 
we used to get fried in school, you know what I'm saying? Already, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> exactly. it's, it's one thing to get fried in school, then also get thrown Exactly. Out, so like, yeah. I'm not about to, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. That's that's messed up. Like, you can't get fried in school, then come back home and fry your family members. Like, mm-hmm. that's kind of crazy. Like, that's mm-hmm. when you're kind of, like, supposed to heal. But, nah, I mean, yeah, we, it was a bad stigma back then, but now it's gotten a lot better. Girls are more attracted to dark-skinned men. Um, Amen. Yeah, so we, we <laughs> winning right now. Nah, for real. Amen. Okay, so how do you guys feel when you hear other men on social media saying, oh, if you're dark skin, you're not winning. Or if you're light skin, you're winning. If you're dark skin, you know, they try to like paint dark skin as this less attractive thing. Like, how do you guys feel when you hear people say that about people who look like your mother's sisters? That, that's their preference. All I can say is people tend to get look like us. So, well, um, that's true. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't just be. You can't say you're dark. You're you're not winning because you're dark skinned. It's it's just that's a bad mentality. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's just a bad stigma. To yeah, even I know. Because like, yeah, I mean, but, but back in 2016, remember when uh, Instagram was like popping, and then they used to make those meme pictures, and they'll say, "Oh, team light skin, team dark skin." Yeah, yeah sure. like I saw a post recently that reminded me it was a post made in 2015 that was like. If your brown light skin girls are definitely winning, brown skin girls, yeah, y'all got it. If your dark skin, kill yourself. We just, I mean, that was extreme. Oh, but that yeah, yeah, I saw a post recently. Yes. I'm like, ooh, I need to bring this up in a conversation yes. because I yes. almost forgot what we used to go through, like going on Instagram, Instagram, and seeing all these things. Especially Twitter. Twitter is brutal. <laughs> oh, back then, Twitter was Twitter was brutal. But yeah, like we used to see a lot of those when this is when we we're like in high school like still trying to grow up and like no, get into that maturity so yeah i mean it definitely affected some of our insecurities but yeah i was just wondering like how you guys would feel if somebody said that to people who look like your immediate family i just i just i just look at it like all right that's their preference exactly. obviously they're not into dark-skinned women uh, i am everyone i've been with is very dark-skinned so it's just like it's all about preference man true. i love i love black women so I don't care if you're light, dark, brown skin, you riding, you riding. You know True. what I'm saying? Like, True. that's how I look at it. Exactly. True. So your mom's siblings, well, your mother, I'm focusing on your mother. Your mother is dark skin. What are some qualities about her that you you admire? Oh, I'm strong. Yeah, I feel resilient. like all African women are strong. And resilient, resilient as hell. That's yeah. one thing that I could tell you, resilient. Yeah. She will go to heaven and hell. Like, she go to hell and back for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's... You know, that's one thing that, you know, I can't, like, you can't, you, you know what I'm saying? You can't even, like, you can't even start to imagine, like, the depth of love that you get from an African mother, you know what I'm saying, growing mother, up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's she, immense, man. Yeah, it's your, immense. your mother going, your mother going, uh, going to protect her cubs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. She's going to make sure her kids are good. That's why sure. you do certain things that kind of be out of pocket, but they're just doing that out of love to make sure you good. Yeah. And we don't understand that when we're young, but mothers Both got their best interest for their son, even though they might not know everything, but the... It's from the bottom of their heart. They're just trying to look out for you. Yeah. Okay, so let me read a science study that was made by uh, an Ivy League school. Mm-hmm. What, are you, what are your thoughts on this? A study and a study slash article says, science proves, or fi- science finally proves that Kate Middleton, Middleton and that is Prince William? One of the prince's mm-hmm. wives. Yeah. yeah, one of the prince's wives, is perfect. So at long last, researchers have proved that Kate Middleton's face is the perfect face. Her face? Yes, her face. And it was on, uh, uh, it was on the news, actually, that science proves that women who look like her mm-hmm. are beautiful. Like, their science literally proves that the dimension from her eye and her nose or like whatever is perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. So what do you guys think about that? Like, them putting that standard of beauty out there in the media, like girl, women who look like her are like the perfect face. What do you guys think of that? I mean, beauty beauty really lies in the eyes of the beholder, so you can't call it for everybody. That's one yeah. thing. And perfection, I don't think we know what perfection is because we are all trying to achieve it in our own ways. Mm-hmm. And for you to feel like that in your definition is perfect to you does not necessarily apply to everybody else exactly. mm. so yeah in a situation like that i mean that is still up for debate like for example when they have 
the world sexiest men uh what you call it sexiest men alive yeah, yeah. yeah that, that that joint when they when they do that stuff some of the guys that came out some of the guys that came out i'm, I'm i remember it was <laughs> each was up one time and then the next person after him i think it's a new batman guy right the new uh the guy that was in twilight i forgot his name i know who you're talking about yeah him <laughs> and this is the whole world and i was like what <laughs> Yeah. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I feel like it's just, it's just, it's just a perception thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I feel like it's a personal perception thing. Your, your own perception of beauty is like how you're saying a lot of a lot of women these days are attracted to dark skinned men. That's their perception mm-hmm. of perfection right there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, so you wouldn't necessarily. So now, my, what's the difference between preference? So now, okay. I didn't want to bring this question up to here, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it. So when you say preference, right, do you guys remember the situation in Rose Bar where... Uh-huh. Oh, perfect. This is great. Go ahead. <laughs> where Rose Bar put a picture up on Twitter with all these beautiful women. Yep. And a lot of people were complaining like, oh, where are the chocolate girls? Where are the... Where's the diversity? You know, Mm -hmm. so now in a country like America that is diverse, has different colors, a city like D.C., I mean, very diverse, different cultures, ethnicities. I mean, do you think that representation should be prominent in every area? Because United States is united with different kinds of people. So do you think that that was his preference for his club or do you think that that was colorism as a lot of people were saying on social media? Um, that, I mean, it was both. It was definitely his preference for the club and it was sure. definitely colorism. By the end of the that's day, true. we can't get mad at him because that's his business, right? Mm-hmm. Why are we getting mad about what Rose Bar is doing when if you go to Silver Spring, society is a black-owned club. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We always talk about black empowerment and stuff like that, but we don't even show the love at society that we do at Rose Bar. Because mm-hmm. Rose Bar is the vibe. Rose Bar got the nice little, you take a nice little picture next to the green background. I get it. It's cool and all, but like, y'all keep talking about black empowerment and go to society at Rose Bar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. Right. So do you think, okay, so now, like, I, repre- repre- do you think representation is important in, in, in every business place in America or certain businesses yeah. like corporate I think level. Every, I think it's, it's important every way because you never might know who you might run into mm-hmm. and certain people know how to talk to other people better than you might think you could so it's mm-hmm. like representation representation is huge it's mm-hmm. very important and that, that's what gets you in the door for real for us right. mm-hmm. even even in a society like this it gets you a long way even as far as diversity is concerned exactly. you know? mm-hmm. so if you are you know you you've already seen how people get canceled and all that you know exactly. what I'm saying like Rose Bar, he's still gonna get his. He's still, still gonna, gonna get, get his, his back crown because he's still. I mean, this, those are the people that have been there. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 not a new thing. Mm-hmm. They've been there. It's <laughs> just they just put it. They just put it out for everybody to see. Yeah, you know exactly. what I'm saying? So, been like that. Yeah, yeah, and the people still already go there. Nobody says anything. She's just yeah. Like, y'all still there? So exactly. why y'all complaining? Y'all, uh, so <laughs> if representation is important, how come? He's not representing what DC is like. Because he doesn't care. Because he doesn't. Like, 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 when your bag is still coming in, you don't care. Exactly. True. Like, like, True. It's, it's not fucking up his bag. Like, like he said, it's his preference. So that might be his perfection. You True. know what I'm saying? So, True. And I maybe, agree maybe with that too. Like, maybe my fault. I mean, no, you're fine. Maybe he feels like I don't know. Maybe the black people don't spend as much money as the other people. Who True. knows? He has his preference. I'm mm-hmm. not saying it's right. But maybe that's just how he feels. Yeah. And it's his business. And me personally, I just want to add on to it. I just feel, yeah, like you said, it's his preference. And I mean, if like you said, if you don't want to go to Rose Bar, go oh, to no. where you're accepted. Go mm-hmm. to where you're loved. Or go to where you feel comfortable. Right. You know, it doesn't make any sense for you to, oh, Rose Bar is, um, is colorist. But then you're the same person every yeah. Saturday. You turn yeah. it up, and, right then, and then you get mad because you're you see, right and you see somebody who doesn't look like you serving you. It's just like <laughs> go to where you're loved, you know. Go to where you're more accepted, <laughs> so that way you don't feel people. So spend money, money on your people. Money. Exactly, exactly. People. Well, that is all we have for today for this segment. Thank you guys so much for joining me in this conversation. I'm gonna leave their Instagram handles. You guys want to um, check them out and. I will see you guys in my next segment.
Bye, y'all. Because listen, you waste their good years, their prime years, and their 20s just messing around, doing crazy, hot girl summer, right? And then once they hit 30, they be like, dang, I ain't got no man next to me. So once they realize they don't have a man next to them, what do they do? Oh, I want a baby now. And I don't even care if the man's gonna stay with me. So they have the baby with or without the man. Where are we getting blamed?